Hello everyone. Today our topic is a lecture upon the shadow by John Donne. The poet of this poem, John Donne, was a multifaceted personality. He was an English poet, a scholar, soldier, and later he became the cleric in the Church of England. He was also the Dean of St. Paul's Cathedral in London. John Donne holds a very prominent position in the history of English literature because he is the person who is known for the metaphorical poetry. His poetical works are noted for the metaphorical and sensual style which include sonnet, love poems, religious poems, his translations of Latin, elegies, songs, satires, and he's also known for his sermons. I personally feel talking about the metaphysical poetry is very crucial in order to understand this poem. Hence, I would like to discuss few points here. Now, talking about metaphysical poetry is a very different kind of poetry because it is highly intellectualized uh, it's uh, it has a very strange imagery and it's it contains complicated thought now the word meta means after so the meaning of metaphysical is after the physical so something which is beyond something which is philosophical the metaphysical poetry also has an aim to shock the readers and wake him or up from their normal existence in order to question the unquestionable. So these type of poetry has this tinge of question whether it's religion, God, science. Now let's read the poem. I'll be doing a loud reading for you, followed by a silent reading by the students. Stand still and I will read to thee a lecture, Love in Love's Philosophy. These three hours that we have spent walking here, two shadows went along with us which we ourselves produced. But now the sun is just above our head. We do those shadows tread, and to brave clearness all things are reduced. So whilst our infant loves did grow, disguises did, and shadows flow from us and our cares. But now tis not so, that love has not attained the highest degree which is still diligent lest others see. Except our loves at this noon stay, we shall new shadows make the other way. At the first were made to blind others. These which come behind will work upon ourselves and blind our eyes. If our love, fa love faint and westwardly decline, to me thou falsely thine, and I to thee mine actions shall disguise. The morning shadows wear away, but these grow longer all the day. But oh, love's day is short, if love decay. Love is a growing of full constant light, and his first minute after moon is night. The central theme of this poem is the way we present ourselves to others, be it in any relationship, whether it's love or friendship or family. We cast ourselves in shadow. We hide our true selves from others and we present the best version of ourselves because we want to be accepted. But as that relationship grows, we cast aside the shadow that trails behind us and allow the other person to see as we truly are. The other person likewise reveals themselves 
in this noon sun and the sun this noon is the height of the relationship but if we can't hold our true love our true relationship then love in this relationship declines and finally that relation ends let's discuss the first eight lines of the poem in these lines as you can see on the screen the poet is talking to his lover and he has asked the lover to stand still because he is going to talk about love in a philosophical manner the poet and his lover have spent 3 hours walking while they walked the shadows fell on the ground and moved with them they have produced the shadow all this while the shadows have followed them but when it's noon and the sun is just above our heads the shadows disappear and it seems that we are treading or stamping these shadows and at noon we are also able to see clearly as the shining sun is not blurring our vision this is this also means that in the beginning of any relationship there are differences but when they reach noon it is the peak of their love and understanding as all the differences are cleared out are sorted out and two people unite in love the morning shadow is a part which shows that there is differences between two people but when they move towards noon time the shadows come closer and finally the differences are cleared in these lines the poet tells that while their love was in its infant stage they hid their true self to be accepted in the beginning during the morning we disguise and shadow our love and care but this hiding doesn't happen when we reach noon when love is at its zenith according to the poet love has not yet reached its peak if it is diligently or persistently hiding the true self from others the poet in these lines feels that noon is the perfect time in a relationship when lovers forget the flaws in their lover as sun shines the brightest at noon similarly love is purest at noon the poet in the last two lines year says that if love does stay at its peak during noon then shadows which had disappeared will appear again but in opposite direction in the first three lines the poet says that the shadows that formed in the morning was to blind others hide their feeling from others save your true self from other people but the shadows afternoon is even more problematic as lovers start faking their emotions for each other the poet in these lines expresses his philosophy in these words he feels that after reaching the peak of true love if they don't hold to their love if there are differences between them which will keep growing like the afternoon shadow which grows with time these differences between them will turn them blind to each other's love the poet says that the lover will show love but this is not true love it is just a mask of love that she has put on and in a similar fashion the poet will also disguise his feelings which will not be true feelings for his lover in the last few lines of the poet the poet says that the morning shadow which symbolizes 
new love and relationship goes away as they reach new which means that the infatuation attraction it vanishes and converts into true love but the afternoon shadow grows hence the differences in their love will engulf their love so if lovers are not careful and if there is doubt in their relationship it will be like the afternoon shadow which keeps growing growing and that will result in the end of the relationship but oh love's day is short if love decay yet the poet tries to convey that love is short lived love has a very small life if it's not true love if there is selfishness there is differences in love then this love is this love will end soon coming to the last two lines of the poem love is a growing of full constant light so in these lines the poet feels that love is something that should grow or it should be stable a constant light like light shows path to people it brings happiness and joy in a similar fashion love should also have a guiding factor it should also provide happiness and joy and when love has reached its peak which is at noon after that even one single moment of difference or selfishness in a relationship will only result in the end of this beautiful relationship as there will be no love in it anymore so the poet tells that love which grows like the morning shadow it reaches its peak at noon and then if there is not true love if the lovers doubt if the lovers can't accept their partner as they are then the very moment after the noon will be the end of their relationship just to summarize the poem the poet in a very philosophical manner has presented this complex thought of love being like shadow and the poet compares the vision of lovers to a situation of light and shadow wherein sight is only unhindered at noon so noon is the only time where we can clearly see and noon is the time when lovers are in true love with each other the poet philosophizes about love saying that in the beginning love is like morning shadow it's separated but by the time they reach noon their differences are resolved and they are united in true love but if they don't hold on to their true love then like the afternoon shadow which grows longer their differences too will grow and their love will get over they will be separated forever we'll quickly discuss a few poetic devices that john dan has used in these lines the first is alliteration which means repetition of similar sounds so we have few examples stand still so the repetition of s there these three disguises did and so on there are many more examples moving to the next is imagery so while we read the poem we have our mind flooded with images and one such example is when the lovers are walking their shadows following them so while reading we can clearly see this image the third poetic device is metaphor which is indirect comparison so the depiction of light and shadow presents a metaphor of start apex and end of a relationship 
so this entire comparison between shadow and love can be seen in the poem and the last is personification which we see in the very last line of the poem where the poet has personified love and he says his first minute that's love's first minute after noon can bring end to their love with this i come to the end of this poem i hope the explanation given by me has been understood if you still have any doubt you can mention it in the comment section thank you